Assalamualaikum and hi everyone. We are now in lecture 9, Data Warehouse Part 1. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain basic data warehouse and describe the architecture of data warehouse. In a company, there will be a lot of systems that pointing to the same database. Your company might have other system, marketing system, finance systems and also human resource system. If the database is being accessed every single day, it is what we call as operational database. Since there are a lot of systems, there must be a lot of users too. If the user is using the system on daily basis, they are called transactional user, for example the clock. If the user is using the system on certain period to make some monitoring, analysis or decision, they are called non-transactional user, for example the manager or supervisor. In a database approach, a user needs to use DBMS to access the database. In a normal system, there will be multiple roles of users such as the clerk and manager. The clerk will access the system every single day to record the transaction that is happening in the company. Once in a month maybe, a manager will take a look at the same database to see how the business is performing based on the daily transactions recorded. A report from the database is generated by the manager to present it to the top management. But, what if the data inside operational database is not well formatted? Or, it has null values at important columns? This will make the report is not fully reliable. Hence, the concept of data warehouse is then introduced. Before making some analysis on the data, the data is transformed and cleaned so that it will be free from any errors. Once the data is summarized, it will be loaded into a data warehouse. What is a data warehouse? It is still a storage facility. By definition, it is a central data repository where data from operational database and other sources are integrated, cleaned and standardized to support decision making. Since the purpose of data warehouse is to support decision making, now the manager can make an analysis or report of how the business is performing not from operational database anymore. The analysis and report is coming from the summarized data from the data warehouse. These are the examples of questions that will be asked if you are the manager of the company. You will see which are our lowest or highest margin customer, who are my customers and what products are they buying and so forth. Let's take a look on characteristic of data warehouse. The first one is subject oriented. Subject oriented means it can be used to analyze a particular subject area in a data warehouse. The second one is integrated. The data in data warehouse is not coming from only one source. It comes from multiple sources of data. Hence, the second characteristic, it can integrate data from multiple data sources. The third one is time variant. Time variant because data in the data warehouse is only accurate and valid at some point in time or over some time interval. The time variance of the data warehouse is also shown in the extended time that the data is held, the implicit or explicit association of time with all data, and the fact that the data represents a series of snapshots. Or in short, we can say, data warehouse cap historical data. The last one is about non-volatile. As the data is not updated in real time but is refreshed from operational systems on a regular basis, new data is always added as a supplement to the database rather than a replacement. As I said previously, if the database is being accessed every single day, that is what we call as operational database. Operational database also is called OLTP, Online Transaction Processing. A DBMS built for Online Transaction Processing or LTP is generally regarded as unsuitable for data warehousing because each system is designed with a differing set of requirements in mind. For example, OLTP systems are designed to maximize the transaction processing capacity while data warehouses are designed to support ad hoc query processing. Let's take a look on the comparison of the major characteristics of OLTP systems and data warehousing systems. 
An organization will normally have a number of different OLTP systems for business processes such as inventory control, customer invoicing and point of sale. These systems generate operational data that is detailed, current and subject to change. The OLTP systems are optimized for a high number of transactions that are predictable, repetitive and update intensive. The OLTP data is organized according to the requirements of the transactions associated with the business applications and support the day-to-day -day decisions of a large number of concurrent operational users. In contrast, an organization will normally have a single data warehouse which holds data that is historical, detailed and summarized to various levels and rarely subject to change. The data warehouse is designed to support relatively low numbers of transactions that are unpredictable in nature and require answers to queries that are ad hoc, unstructured and heuristic. The warehouse data is organized according to the requirements of the potential queries and supports the long-term strategic decision of a relatively low number of managerial users. Although OLTP systems and data warehouses have different characteristics and are built with different purpose in mind, these systems are closely related in that the OLTP systems provide the source data for the data warehouse. A major problem of this relationship is that the data held by the OLTP systems can be inconsistent, fragmented and subject to change containing duplicate or missing entries. As such, the operational data must be cleaned up before it can be used in the data warehouse. OLTP systems are not built to quickly answer ad hoc queries. They also tend not to store historical data, which is necessary to analyze trends. Basically, OLTP offers large amounts of raw data which is not easily analyzed. The data warehouse allows more complex queries to be answered. The types of queries that a data warehouse is expected to answer range from the relatively simple to the highly complex and are dependent on the type of end user access tools used. As shown on your screen is the layers in data warehouse architecture. The first one that we have is operational and external database layer. This is the source data for the data warehouse. The second one, information access layer, the tools the end user access to extract and analyze the data. For data access layer, it is the interface between the operational and information access layer. For metadata layer, this is the data dictionary or repository of metadata information. For process management layer, it is the scheduler of job controller. For physical data warehouse layer, it is where the actual data used in the decision support systems are located. For data staging layer, all of the processes necessary to select, edit, summarize and load warehouse data from the operational and external databases. Let's take a look on typical data warehouse architecture. First, there must be multiple data sources chosen as the data to be summarized into the data warehouse. Once the data sources are chosen, it will go through the ETL process. E means the data from multiple data sources are extracted. After the extraction, the extracted data must be transformed into desired format. Or simply we can say, the data is cleaned and summarized. For example, let's say you have extracted 1000 rows of data from multiple sources. Once it is being summarized, maybe you are left with only 3 rows of data. After the data is cleaned and summarized, it will be loaded into data warehouse. See, from 1000 rows of extracted data, we only load 3 rows of summarized and clean data in the data warehouse. Then, the manager can access the data warehouse using specific tools to make some analysis and present it in certain format of dashboard, charts and sometimes scorecards. I guess that's all for now. See you again in the next part. Thank you.